Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, April 26, 2024. The government is exploring plans to establish a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM innovation teaching center at the National Hero Circle in Kingston. Prime Minister Andrew Holness addressed the matter on Wednesday during the Future Ready International Conference held on the University of Technology campus. Mr. Holness says a STEM innovation teaching center furthers government's policy of ensuring that Jamaica becomes a digital society. The facility would form part of of the redevelopment of Hero Circle, which will include a new parliament building and other structures to house the various government ministries and agencies. I'm very careful that we should locate strategic buildings in areas that make logical sense. You don't want to put your strategic buildings in places where you can't access them, infrastructure is not there. So we have a plan for the redevelopment of the Hero Circle area, which is in proximity to Michael. And I'm certain, Glenn, that within that plan, we will find a space for the STEM Teacher Innovation Center. Prime Minister Holness also used the Future Ready Conference to declare Jamaica a STEM island. So today, I am pleased to declare Jamaica as a STEM island with a vision of fostering innovation, driving economic growth, and empowering our people to thrive in the global knowledge economy. Through our collaborative all hands on deck approach, government, private sector, academia, and the civil society, we will work towards this goal. Jamaica already boasts four centers of excellence for STEM set up with the support of the Hart NSTA Trust and government has begun the process of constructing six STEM schools across the island. Among other initiatives, last year the STEM tertiary scholarship program was launched, offering scholarships to 1,250 Jamaican students. It's for them to pursue a STEM teaching career at Michael University over the next five years. 752 acres of land in Clarendon will go under production to cultivate breadfruit, roots and tubers that will be used to produce gluten-free flour. The sugar company of Jamaica, SCJ Holdings Limited, is leasing the land to Jamaica Flour Mills and UWI Sodeco, an international research entity located at the University of the West Indies, Mona. The entity signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, for the lease agreement on Thursday. Minister of Agriculture Floyd Green welcomed the Oasis Farms venture. Of course, it will provide employment for community members, but it will also look to address some of the deep-rooted socioeconomic challenges that are being faced, whether those are related to health, whether those are related to education, it will really help us to move that Clarendon Belt forward. An additional 20 acres are being reserved to establish a processing plant in the area. This is among 106 new leases approved by the government, covering approximately 1,590 acres of former sugar lands that will be used to produce a variety of crops across St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Thomas, Trelawney, and Westmoreland. Meanwhile, Jamaica's fisheries sector contributed more than $30 billion to the country's gross domestic product, GDP, last year. The total production from marine captures and aquaculture was 14.58 thousand metric tons, valued at 195.3 million US dollars. It means that the fisheries contribution to the agriculture sector actually accounted for 12.79% while our contribution to the total GDP at the end of 2023 was 1.04%. This is the first time in several years that we have actually gotten to at least 1% contribution to GDP. So that is very, very significant. The NFA's Principal Director of Fisheries Compliance, Licensing and Statistics gave the update during a JIS think tank on Wednesday. In recent years, the NFA has implemented several incentive programs targeted at increasing the activity of fishers in diverse and non-traditional areas of the sector, including the production of sea moss and sea cucumber. 
Director of the Child Diversion Branch, CDB, in the Justice Ministry's Social Justice Division, Venicia Clark, says the unit remains committed to providing a circle of care for children through partnerships with other entities. The CDB is tasked with providing rehabilitative services for children aged 12 to 17 who come in conflict with the law and diverting them from formal judicial proceedings. Ms. Clark says several educational and skills training opportunities are provided to children in the program. This is already in progress and it goes up to 20, March 2025. Uh, it allows for children who are attain the age of 17 at least to be referred to Heart NSA Trust. And you know that they include not only just the skills training and the job placement, but they also include remedial um, education. And um, that is very important because we find that some of the children coming to us, they actually need that, that type of intervention as well. The CDB director was speaking during a think tank on Monday. She also highlighted other services offered to the children through its various partners. We partner with other entities to provide that circle of care. Some of the entities that we partner with include the National Council on Drug Abuse that is under the Ministry of Health, and they provide the drug treatment intervention. The Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation provides the sexual and reproductive health education and counseling. We also have private um, psychologists, social workers, guidance counselors that we contract to provide the psychotherapy for the individual and family counseling sessions. And finally, the 2024 celebration of Child Month will deliver a charge to stand up, speak out, protect the rights of our children. The theme was announced during Thursday's media launch of the observation by the National Child Month Committee, NCMC. Committee Chair Dr. Pauline Mullings says it is a call to action for citizens to fulfill their duty of protecting Jamaica's children. Child protection is everybody's business. This year, we renew the call for all to be dedicated and relentless in safeguarding the nation's children as we work together to foster their welfare and development, preparing them to be champions in their own rights. This year's Child Month activities kick off with a church service on May 5 at the Saxthorpe Methodist Church in Kingston. It's followed by the observance of National Children's Day on May 17. Then on May 29, the National Day of Prayer will be held at the Eastwood Park Road New Testament Church of God. Events in May close off on the 31st with a care package distribution day when needy families will be targeted for assistance. Child Month observation picks up again in November as the National Youth Forum is slated for the first of that month. And the celebratory activities culminate with the Youth Academic Achievement Awards ceremony to be held on November 22 at the Canewood Center Auditorium. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.